Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Lore, and this is the first episode I'm making after I'm done with finals. So I'm finally done with finals, videos should be coming back to normal, they're not as uh, kind of rushed or anything like that, or shorter. With that being said though, I'm going to be starting working on some concept theories, or um, theory videos and things like that, uh, more community videos that might take a little bit more time than usual, so I'm going to be working on those, I'll have the time to work on it more, i got three weeks off! Three weeks, finally. That three weeks is going to go by so quick. Um, <laughs> that being said, I'd like to thank Ares for allowing me to use his music for this video. For all my videos, really. And then I'd like, also like to make a shout out to the Discord chat. Feel free to join in the link in the description below and in the channel header. With that being said, there's not too much to announce. Um, I did record a little bit about my dog. Uh... My dog, when I started to record this, like, get, prepare this video and get everything together, my dog came up to me and started licking my headset and trying to kiss me. And so that happened. I don't know if I'll include it, depending on, uh, I haven't listened to it yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention to it. I'll go back, and if it is there, I'll add it to the end of the video. With that being said, today we're going to be talking about the Shadow Legion. Alright, so we're going to see how quick we can get this done before my dog starts uh, barking. She likes to do that. So the Shadow Legion was created during the Alliance War in the Second Era. And during the Alliance War, the Shadow Legion had affiliated itself with various Imperial Legions across the Crumbling Empire. Within Cyrodiil, its war mages and sorcerers set up encampments in the wilds to combat the forces of the three alliances. <coughs> Excuse me. Other Imperial, ma Imperial mages affiliated themselves with the Seventh Legion and invaded Bankarai. These wizards would use their magical powers to summon the Daedra to take over Bankarai Garrison. The Bankarai Garrison, sorry about that. And were also involved with the capture of Haleen's Stand and Ansai's Breath. Originally, after conquering the Garrison, leader of the assault, Magus General Septima Tharn, had managed had arranged plans with the Duke of Evermore, known as Duke Renchant, to take over the city peacefully. Though she did not plan on enslaving the uh, did, though she did plan on enslaving the populace. Duke Renchant agreed to the plan, fearing a Reachman invasion and being ignorant of the Imperials' plans to enslave its people. Upon discovering this plan, the Duke was removed from the position of power and the original queen of the city, Queen Azarhela, took the throne. Later, in a supposedly parley, parlay, Subtima demanded that the unconditional surrender of the city happen. Azarhela refused and attempted to murder the general only to discover that Subtima had used an illusion to portray himself, herself rather than meeting the queen in person. Due to Arzhella's er, uh, attempted assault, the general ordered the Seventh Legion to attack, and the, Imper the Imperial Battle Mages ensuring their passage by creating portals. When the Imperials were pushed back, the Bankarai gar Garrison, I almost said Garnison, which is Danish for Garrison, <coughs> um, the Imperial Wizards did the, the best they could, originally slowing down the Covenant forces by casting firebolts at the Covenant troops in the courtyard until they were pushed back into the crypts of the garrison. The wizards held the bridge leading to the crypt, attacking Covenant forces with firebolts. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, I am just—I thought I got confused reading the same line. Attacking the forces with firebolts. Imperial battle mage Pappus, the head of the local bat battle mages, unleashed a dark anchor in a last attempt to stop the Covenant forces, only to be killed by the Vestige. The anchor was destroyed and the Imperial garrison was liberated and remained the Imperial for and the what remained of the Imperial forces being taken captive. Sorry about that. With Halleen stand, the Imperial forces kept an eye on the local populace as the Imperial invasion was generally frowned upon. Aside from this, the battle mages did not do a lot to the settlement. At on sea's breath, the Imperial sorcerers and soldiers were under command of Pentheus Varro, who himself was an Imperial battle mage too. These forces were tasked with conquering the wealthy mine and using its resources to, for the arms and armor of the legion that they needed. Due to the lack of workers, the Imperials conscripted part of the populace to work in the mines. When the mining op operation got sabotaged, le legion battle mages were present on the site to deal with the Vestige who was responsible, though they were defeated. Shortly after the commander, eventually the leader of the 7th legion, Septima Tharn, would meet her end in the Red Guard afterlife called the Far Shores. She was hoping to raise an army of dead and bring them into the after bring them out of the afterlife and binding their spirits to her. While she was doing so, part of the Legion and its battle mages had set up camp outside the Hall of Heroes and secured the location as best they could, only to be defeated by the Covenant assault. 
Now, during the late Second Era, the Imperial Battle Mages were located in the heartlands of Cyrdo, where they defeated the Imperial City against Tiber Septim's invading army. Where they defended the Imperial City, sorry, by, against Tiber Septim's imp, uh, invading army. Despite their attempts, Septim's army proved too strong for the force, and the heartlands were captured by Tiber Septim. When most of the Legion was occupied fighting the Camoran up Usurper in the Third Era, a pirate gang known as the Red Stavers started raiding the Abyssinian Sea. Upon the Usurper's defeat, a Commodore by the name of Fasil Umbaranox turned his attention toward the pirate gang. Umbaranox was provided with many resources to end the pirates. Despite the heavy cost of the war against the Usurper, the Commodore was able to slowly start to pushing back the pirates and reclaim the islands that were taken. He would execute and imprison the pirates along the way, and gaining valuable intelligence. After four years, the Commodore had found the captain, uh, which was named Captain A. Uh, Op Dugal and the naval clash took place. After many ships were sunk, only the Black Flag and Ubernonix's flagship remained intact. Ubernonix had mages upon the Legion ship and was able to use them to attack the pirates. The mages chanted a spell and entombed the Black Flag in a cave of boulders of what had been a cliffside just a few moments before. Now, during the invasion of the Akavir by Eurosepto V, the Imperial Battle Mages were also involved, and this is still members of the Shadow Legion. Their first deeds were during the war were to provide the invasion por force with magical reconnaissance, as the normal legions lacked any cavalry to scout the land. In the winter season of 288 to 289 of the Third Era, the Far East Fleet was prevented from returning to Akavir due to the duration and severity of the season. The battle mages reported this to the Emperor, and matters would grow worse, as due to the severity of the winter, the rations of the expeditionary force grew tight, and many of the foraging missions were cut down by Tsaitsky ra raiders. With many of the Imperial forts between Ionith and Septimia being captured by the Akaviri, communications between the two settlements had to be performed through magic, and, continuing, and this pr proved to be a continuing strain on the battle mages. During the second seed of 289 of the Third Era, the Far East Fleet had been devastated by storms at sea. Due to this, a majority of the Imperial Battle Mages were ordered to board the ships to combat the weather at the order of the Emperor. With most of the Battle Mages now on the fleet, communications between Tamriel and Akaviri, Akaviri, Akaviri became extremely limited. And what remained of the Battle Mages had to use their powers to their limits to order, in order to see what, what were the needs of the Legions. At the same time, the battle mages on Akavir reported their magic being much weaker than usual. At the same time, the war, the war college in Cyrodiil reported communication problems, as the battle mages in Cyrodiil had trouble linking their, linking with their compatriots on Akavir. Even communications between master, and pupil, of long training. As such, following the invasion, the Elder Council urged the War College to a magical study on regards of the arcane powers of the Sayetsky should the Empire ever come in contact with them again. Mid Sun's height, after a successful ambush on Sayetsky's forces by the Emperor, the Sayetsky counterattacked, resulting in many losses for the legions, and the settlements of both Ionith and Septimia were both besieged. The power of the few remaining battle mages was used at this time, focused solely on creating water to keep them alive, a skill not normally emphasized at the War College. Good news did exist for the legions, as the battle mages which had returned from the far with the Far East fleet had enabled a safe passage back to Black Harbor on Isrianet. In Frostfall, hope was raised as the Legion battle mages came into contact with the Emperor's battle mage, who reported the Emperor was still alive and held out. The army made plans to break out of Ionith and fall back to Septimia, where the Far East fleet would carry them back to Tamriel. When the fleet arrived, Septimia was under heavy assault by a large Tsaitsky force. The battle mages on the fleet were able to use their magic to fight off Tsaitsky long enough for what remained of the Legion to board and sail away. Now, later in the Third Era, the Shadow Legion was recorded to have used a battle, a ba used the Battle Spire, a building co connecting the Plains of Oblivion, for training prior to its destruction. The Legion is further located at the Arcane's University, Arcane's Arcane University, where the Battle Mages serve as guards, and where they have also said to have housed, had been housed in the Imperial Battle College in Chidenal. They also aided in finding out the people who were responsible for the murder of Emperor, Emperor Uriel Septim the Seventh. Some years before the Oblivion Crisis, members of the Shadow Legion were attempting to uncover a hidden power within the Lead Pillar. The Pillar had a great power, being able to strike a person dead on the spot, though it only worked outdoors. Wizards were called from the Mage's Guild, which several of which were hurt while trying to tune the stone. 
but they were eventually able to successfully tune it using shock magic. Though, through research, they discovered that the only way to access the power was by having the Welkinid Stone, and if done correctly, the user would obtain a powerful spell. During the Oblivion Crisis, the Shadow Legion was able to use, was called upon by, um, I knew I was going to mess this up, Hieronymus Lex, a card captain of the Imperial City, to search for the Grey Fox at the Imperial City waterfront. Due to the Shadow Legion being charged with guard duty at Arcane University, the Thieves Guild used this opportunity to steal Hiromir's Hrom ice staff from the Archmage's quarters. Because of this, the Mage's Guild ordered Guard Captain Lex to send the Battle Mages back to the University to keep it safe. Now, during the Fourth Era, the Skyrim Civil War was waging. Battle Mages were used at locations such as Helgen, where they fought Alduin, an ex Legion Battle Mage veteran. Of the Great War, Medina made her home at Dawnstar as well. And basically, that is roughly it in terms of the history. And now, for types of mages, there are everything from Imperial Mages to Imperial Sorcerers to Storm Mages, Fire Mages, Pyromancers, Cryomancers, uh, Healers, Menders, Necromancers, even. Uh, those were only used towards the earlier portion of it when they served Septima Tharm. And there were more war mages as well to be trained for more special times of war. With that being said, we also don't know if the Shadow Legion is a specific legion or itself, or if it's just a bunch of uh, cohorts that are assigned to each legion. With that being said, though, we don't really know. Now, I'm sorry for my voice. My voice has gone to shit. I am super sick right now. And by super sick, I mean I just have a cough and a scratchy throat. But with that being said, I hope you guys understand, and I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please like and subscribe. If you guys have any more recommendations, feel free to let me know in the Discord chat or in the comments below, and I'll see you guys around. Peace. My voice was, like, going to crap. That's why I had, like, a little pause there. Peace.